Myrtle vs. Camelot, a spirit sword, and a new plot MacGuffin are all in store in the latest chapter of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, The Drug of Yore. I'll try and keep the Four Nights weekly, and so if you're interested, like, share, and subscribe, and help the anime underworld expand. But first... Last time on Four Nights at the Apocalypse, the giant fairy princess Tiori explains to Nasiens the bizarre nature of the fairy realm, including its civilians. Gender is picked by love. The sky is green because it's believed to be the upper echelons of the god tree, the sacred tree itself and numerous members of her family have unique and distinct features. Those who inherited the blood of the giant mother, Deanne, are slightly smaller, while others who have become more fairy-like have either lost certain features or have gained numerous others. Why did she explain all this? Because Tiori believes that Nasiens is not human at all. She believes that Nasiens is actually a member of the Fairy Clan. The Fairy Realm has a unique miasma effect that is deadly to humans, but because Nasiens has spent the last two years there without the need of a Boolean pill, she believes that Nasiens is truly a member of the Fairy Clan, and why Nasiens is now in a weird, unique, gender-neutral state. But the revelation of these pills and the miasma has led Nasiens to believe that Myrtle, the firstborn child of King of Nian, is actually a human. Meanwhile, the prince himself has been returning with the fairy baby, but is now blocked by associates of Camelot with a deadly miasma poison that will kill fairies. We begin our new chapter with Myrtle and this weird gremlin thing called Killbaggin? I think that's how you say his name, Killbaggin. This little gremlin thing is the head mage of Camelot. The little heathen asks Myrtle why a human shouldn't join them instead of against the other races. But Myrtle proudly proclaims that he is a son of King Indian which shocks Kilbaggin to see a child of two legendary sins. Before a fight can occur, Sextus, the second child of King of the Ant, appears after reading the enemy's mind, saying that they're after the drug of Yore. Kill wonders why the incense isn't working on him since Sextus is a fairy too, but the son of King informs him that he has created a silent air float to dispel the effects. He did so by Hold on to your horses, Spirit Sword, Malgesteria, Form 2, Hummingbird. That's right. Not only is Sixtus looking a lot like his old man, but he can fight with his own spirit weapon. Kilbegan retaliates with an ice spell called Buster Ice, but Sixtus retaliates with Form 1, Scorpion Stinger. I have to say, this is a cool looking sword. The last time we saw a spirit weapon that wasn't a fairy king spear was Helgrim's own, the Holy Tree Sword. It acts like King Spear with some different forms too, so it's nice to see more fairy related weaponry. Kilbegan and their hooded entourage fled from Sixtus and Bertle, now good to bring the baby and Punk back to the fairy realm. Once they cross the gateway, which might need some better security after that, I'm just saying. The two siblings discuss the drug of yore, an item that can cure diseases or curses, even bring back life. Wait a minute, King, this existed the whole time and he couldn't give it to Elaine? Sixes says that the drug is actually holy water that only the fairy king can get from the flowers atop of the sacred tree. And holy moly, that is a big tree. Myrtle once again shows how much of a burden he is as a human thinking that the drug is what he needs, and that is what Sextus heard. Meanwhile, lunch time! We see Deanne being a good mom and asking her kids what they want to eat. Zana and Ziliana want to eat meat, such as a boar or a rabbit. Belte would rather eat fruit, while Peo wants both. So we see the dietary differences between both races, with Peo being a full-on omnivore. Out of all the kids, I did not expect Feo to be a more accurate fusion of both fairy and giant. Diori arrives saying that Nasiens went back to the tunnel to check up on Percival. Nasiens is talking to Percival's body, kinda creepy, about their little gender-neutral state. 
Nazians wasn't sure why they were like that, but now they understood why, because of the recent revelations that Nazians is part of the Fairy Clan. Asking Percival what he would think, and saying that he would probably just treat it like, you know, nothing. After all, it would Nazians still be Nazians. Okay, I don't doubt that Percival might actually get excited and be wowed by Nazians being a fairy. This kid got excited over everything. So he would totally fanboy out of fairy Nazians. Just as Nazians says that his real parents were probably just fairies who abandoned him at a fairy forest, King shows up and looking good in his drip. The fairy king of drip, y'all. King said, since I've lost you, perhaps I've been unconsciously searching for you this whole time. Okay, come on. That is clearly indication that Nazians is King Indian's kid. How much more proof do you need? King lies about saying that he just saw Nazians on a walk and tried to cover it up, but offers his assistance in helping. King goes on to say that Percival might be able to be brought back since he is a life spirit. Human souls go to the realm of the dead, which we saw early on in Seven Deadly Sins. But Percival is a spirit, a function of the world, similar to the spirits we saw like Salamander, Sylph, Gnome, Undine, and others. Wait a minute. Percival is a spirit of life and death. Oh my god! I am a spirit, a function of the world. <gasps> I found future Percival! Nah, I'm just joking. King goes on to say that unlike the elemental spirits, life spirits are worldwide, existing in all races, animals, and plants. So, the force? It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It yeah, it's the force. As they speak, countless life spirits were floating around them. Faintly, fairies and spirits were closely related, and King can see them. We then see little bowls of light spirits just floating around and Nazians calls out to Percival in hopes of them reaching to him, wherever he is. But King silences him for a good reason. The reason being that they call this the Tunnel of Whispers by its name because it is a place of gathering to hear the whispers of spirits. Spooky. Nazians calls out to Percival once again, still clinging on to hope. And King, in his mind, says that he has a gift for Nazi heads. Thus ends chapter 141 of Four Nights. Oh boy, we got a lot of interesting stuff here. We finally get to see another child of King and Deanne in action and with a spirit weapon. It's good to see some new weapons that aren't spears because the last one was Helbrum Sword, but this weapon really takes after the kingly ones with its numerous spear forms. Not only does Sexus look like his dad, but he fights like him too. Again, I am just feeling bad for Myrtle. I know he was arrogant and rude in the first place, but now we know why and how he wants to be helpful and not just some average human while the rest of his other siblings are just advanced super beings. And with King saying he had a gift for Nacien, so this might be the drug of yore he's going to give Nacien's to give for Percival. Again, King, you had this the whole time. Bond could have used that water for Elaine King. Plot McGuffins aside, Myrtle wanting the water to better himself and Nacien's desire to bring back Percival this might be a future conflict between the family. Because Nasians is clearly a Kian kid. The signs are so freaking obvious. While that family drama is going on, Kildagen, which is actually a distillery, so it's not an Arthurian Legends character, but seriously, what is up with Nakaba and alcohol? It's no doubt planning an assault on the fairy realm with the other hooded figures right behind him. Which, by the way, I have to ask, who are they? When we saw hooded figures like this in Leonis, they turned out to be Chaos Molascula bringing forth Chaos Gallon. So who knows who these people are? Are they Chaos Servants too? Are they just cannon fodder mages? We'll have to wait and see. An invasion of the fairy realm is on its way with a new deadly incense. Camelot now has a big ace up their sleeve. 
If Sextus is anything to go by, the Berry Clan might stand a chance, especially with the Giant Clan backing them up. Will the Fairy Realm be ready for Camelot's invasion? What does Arthur plan to do with the drug of yore? Will Harlequin be forced to choose between his sons on who will receive the drug? Will we ever get to see any of the Four Knights again? Stop stalling, Nakaba. Find out next time in Four Knights of the Apocalypse.